Hey guys, in this video, we are going to look at why the Konark Sun Temple was really built. And by the end of this video, you can decide if it is a Hindu temple at all. Imagine that you're a child who's only five years old and your parents have taken you to the Konark Sun Temple. This is what you would see in this temple. At the lowest level of the temple, you will see what children are naturally interested in. Animals. There are exquisite carvings of various animals and their behaviors. For example, you can see how baby elephants hang around their mothers, how monkeys behave. Some are even funny like today's Cartoon Network. Here, you can see how human beings use tamed elephants to capture a wild elephant. This is a cage and you can see how the sculptor has brilliantly carved the elephant inside the cage. This was ancient India's animal planet. But this temple doesn't stop there. I'm going to show you how Konark Temple was built as an encyclopedia, as a university which teaches various subjects for all age groups. I have realized that you can divide this temple into many different subjects according to its height and different locations. The first two feet are carved for small children below five years. And when you reach the ages between six to 10, you're going to see things like dancing, singing, and playing musical instruments. The temple holds an enormous amount of carvings about music and dancing. This is Odyssey, the traditional dance of the region. There are a total of 128 postures of traditional Indian dance carved in this temple. If you're a tough kid, you can also see martial arts like boxing and wrestling. Of course, life would be no fun without games, so you can also learn games like the tug of war as well. The third level, fit for ages between 11 and 15, has enormous scientific information, specifically astronomy. This wheel is a sundial that can tell the accurate time precisely down to the minute. The temple dedicated to the sun god Surya is a giant symbolic representation of how the sun works. The temple is shaped as a chariot with 24 wheels representing 24 hours of the day featuring three sun gods, the morning sun with a happy face, the somber noon sun and the evening sun with a sad face. But all experts and commoners have missed something very important. What are these weird animals carved on either side of the chariot? They are actually horses in an extremely disintegrated state. They were disfigured by foreign invaders. There are a total of seven horses which pull the chariot of the sun. Now, why is the chariot being pulled by seven horses? Some say, just like the 24 wheels represent the 24 hours of the day, the seven horses represent seven days of the week. But this is not true. Astronomers agree that the seven days of the week are not connected to the sun at all. And some civilizations even had eight-day weeks because it's not relevant to the movement of the earth relative to the sun. So why is the chariot of the sun god being pulled by seven horses? If you talk to elderly people in this area, they reveal some intriguing information. They say that each of the seven horses was painted with a different color of the rainbow. So this horse was probably painted with violet, this one with indigo, and so on. Now, we know that Isaac Newton discovered that sunlight is not white, but made of seven different colors. This was a startling discovery back then, and even now it is hard to accept that sunlight, which appears white, is actually made of seven different colors. Newton discovered this in the 1600s, but this temple was built nearly 400 years before Isaac Newton. So how did the ancient builders know that the sunlight was made of seven different colors? More importantly, 
Why aren't historians recording this in their books? Anyway, now you know why the sun god's chariot is being pulled by seven different horses. In the next level, which belongs to the age group from 16 to 20, you can also learn a lot about politics, war, and administration. Here we see the military of ancient kingdom and you can even see the flag. We can see how kings were dealing with commoners in court. You can also see how executions were done. Here's a man being crushed by an elephant. And here you can see people carrying a palanquin safely transporting the queen. You can learn about international connections. In this culture, you can see a group of Africans with a giraffe meeting the Indian king. This carving is still baffling historians because they claim that Africa never had a flourishing civilization. You can see Greeks and Chinese as well in this temple. Of course, you can learn other softer occupations like fashion technology. I've already shown you how Konark Temple shows you high heels, skirts, hairdos, etc. in a different video. Here, I must point out that Hinduism is a very superstitious religion. All over India, couples who are not able to have children visit their local priests, and the priests advise them to visit Konark Sun Temple and spend 21 days here. The ritual requires that the couples walk around the temple in the morning and the evening every day for this 21 days. Of course, the real reason becomes obvious once you look at the carvings at the next level. Konark Temple probably has more erotic sculptures than any other temple in India. There is no way you are not going to be influenced by these sculptures, which number in the thousands. We think the system of sex education was created in Western countries, but historians and archaeologists are not telling us that India had a very systematic approach in educating people about sex. And this is not just limited to postures, by the way. What does this carving show? A woman is standing on a flame right after childbirth to prevent infections. Believe it or not, the tribe called Banda, which still lives in the region, still follow this routine. The women burn neem wood and stand on it right after childbirth. These moms actually start working right after the delivery like it's nothing. The last layer, which belongs to age group 25 and above, has sculptures of various gods, which was a serious business. It is for very mature people who are ready to delve into the subject of the gods. You would only look up if you were not distracted by all these erotic sculptures. There are also sub-levels of how to look at these gods, but that's another video. Now, what we see today is just the outside of the temple. The main structure has been completely destroyed and what we see here is not even the main structure, but a smaller structure built in front of the main structure. Even this one has been completely sealed off, so we can't see what's inside. If this is the amount of knowledge we can gain from outside the temple, imagine what could have been inside the temple. It's a shame that we have let this destruction happen, because we would have had access to some of the biggest secrets of ancient India. If you visit a modern Hindu temple built today, these places are all about faith and business. Every god is placed strategically for the visitor's convenience, and nearby every idol is a donation box, hoping that these visitors will put in some money. If you look at temples older than 500 years, there is a huge difference. Temples like Konark were not just built for faith, but were built as an encyclopedia, a museum, or a university to educate people. This is why Konark should not be labeled merely as a Hindu temple 
because people of any faith can gain enormous amount of knowledge by visiting here. Even if you're an atheist, the amount of information you can see in this temple surpasses any other museum in the world. So what do you think? Was Konark Temple built merely to spread faith? Or was it built as an encyclopedia in 3D to educate us? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.